In these slides, we will cover the response of a physical protection system. Response is a third element of the physical protection system. The response function of the physical protection system includes the response force, which can be guards located off-site or off-site forces such as law enforcement or military personnel. It also includes communication systems so that the personnel can coordinate their actions in real time. The two pictures on the top show response personnel. The response force must be equipped so that they can defeat an adversary attack with reasonable confidence. Response force weaponry can vary based on the perceived threat and the types of materials being protected. You can see the differences in the guards in the top right and top left, where both have rifles around their neck, but on the left they also are equipped with body armor. Depending on the threat in the DBT, more advanced equipment may be required to provide assurance in the response force's ability to win. These can include machine guns, shown with the guard on the top left, remotely operated weapons, shown on the bottom left, or armored vehicles, shown on the bottom right. Calculating the probability of neutralization requires data about the threat, response force, and protection system. Information about the threat includes the number of adversaries, the types of weapons they use, their level of training, and their tactics, which can include stealth, diversions, or multiple simultaneous attacks. What an adversary will actually bring to an attack cannot be determined with certainty, so the neutralization probability will need to be calculated for a variety of weapons and tactics to determine the worst case scenario for the response force. The other data required to calculate the probability of neutralization are known and include the numbers of response force, their weapons, training levels, and response procedures. Information about the physical protection system must be included in the neutralization analysis such as the types and locations of detection and delay elements. The calculation of the neutralization probability requires combining all of this data in a consistent methodology. The easiest and cheapest way is computer simulation. Computer simulations allow for the detection and delay features of the facility to be modeled, as well as the weapons and shooting proficiency of both the adversary and response force. Then various adversary tactics and response force procedures can be tested. Other than computer simulations, neutralization analysis can be done using tabletop exercises or force-on-force -force exercises, or a team of adversaries stage an attack on the facility. Force-on-force -force exercises are expensive, but can be used to provide real-life data and verify results from computer simulations. The probability of neutralization can then be calculated using the simple equation of the number of wins divided by the number of engagements. A meaningful value of PN requires that a statistically significant number of simulations are run for the same initial conditions. Before calculating PN, it is essential that a win is defined. For example, if the target is a denial target, the response force would only win if the adversary is neutralized before they reach the target. If the adversary reaches the target, even if the target is not successfully stolen or sabotaged, it would not be a win. Multiple possible attack strategies and adversary equipment exist, and simulations will need to be run for each combination to ensure there is not a vulnerability in the response system. The response force can be equipped with a variety of equipment to deal with the spectrum of threats that exist. It is important to keep in mind limiting factors, such as the amount of equipment that the individual guards can carry, and that the more equipment they have to put on in the event of an attack will lengthen the response force time and may degrade some of their abilities, such as mobility and marksmanship. The physical protection system design must include a detailed description of the rules of engagement. The response force must know if they are supposed to deny the target or contain the adversary until additional response force personnel arrive. In the event of an alarm, forces must know where to report. Do they report to a defensive position, a rendezvous point with other guards, or proceed to the point of the alarm? All of these considerations are important and must be defined so that the response personnel can be trained accordingly and respond to an incident in a way that gives high confidence in success.